You're welcome. Um, <laughs> okay, excellent. So uh, we have Suvik joining us here today uh, to tell us about what? Suvik, well, you know what? Right. Before, we, before we go, go ahead. What, tell us who. Who are you? What do you do? And uh, well, why should we care? Awesome. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Darko. My name is Shovik. I'm a product manager here at Amazon S3. I actually checked into Vegas yesterday. So this is my first reInvent. Uh, super pumped about that. Uh, we, I'm here to talk about Amazon S3. And I liked how we ended the last session with something like, who doesn't use Amazon S3? So it's a nice little segue uh, to what I'm here to talk about. So today I want to chat about Amazon S3 and Amazon EventBridge and how S3 event notifications are now available Within Amazon EventBridge, this is a good time because I think it I think it has been two minutes since we launched it. So the Jeff Barr uh, news blog just went out. So I'm happy Ooh. to chat all day long about it. <laughs> awesome. So so what is this thing? Um, you know, of course, everybody knows what S3 is. It's where you store your files, your objects. It's the place to store things on the cloud. So what is this exactly exact thing we're launching? Uh, and what is EventBridge? What yeah. Is, what is EventBridge? Yeah. So uh, let me just start off with, um, you know, what Darko, what, what you mentioned. So S3 is, um, you know, the place where you keep your objects, right? It's the, it's our object storage system within AWS. Um, and we have, um, you know, over 200 trillion objects. So that's a lot of objects. So often customers build Absolutely. applications that react to these object changes. So Think about when you add a new object to a bucket or when you make a change to its metadata or when it transitions with life cycle, um, it, often customers use those state changes to build new applications, right? And, and one of the ways for customers to do that is using event notification. So S3 uh, now delivers uh, a lot of new events for new object creation, object deletion, object state changes, and things like that. Now we are extending that functionality with, you know, Kyle, what you mentioned with Amazon EventBridge. And Amazon EventBridge um, is a central event management system for AWS. It, it has all the sources within AWS. Also, you can add third party SaaS apps events and deliver them straight to 18 plus targets. So a bunch of new targets, you can send your events to Lambda functions. You can send your events to SQS queues, SNS topics, um, Kinesis streams, any third party API on the internet. So this unlocks new serverless applications for our customers. And I'm happy, happy to get into a little bit of detail, but I also yeah. want to pause and take some reactions as well. Yeah. So, you know, one of the things I also want to tell the chat here, audience, LinkedIn, Twitter, um, wherever you're watching us at, if you have any questions, comments, ideas, things you want to kind of throw at us, please do so. And Shovik, um, just to kind of not to trigger people here. Uh, could I ask you to mute your Slack and, and emails? Absolutely. Because like, yeah, if we hear that. It's like, did I get an email? <laughs> so it's also, so yeah. uh, you know, it's a launch day for me. So it's I'm, a launch day. I know. So, so Slack is on fire right now. So yeah, exactly. And, and <laughs> let's let's actually try to keep that tension away from the audience. For here. sure. <laughs> so okay, uh, please tell us. You know, I think it's amazing. You 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 put your uh, uh, file on S3. You know, amazing. An event happens. An event goes to Event Bridge, and anything can happen then, right? So tell us what kind of problems. You know, what kind of use cases do you see this being used at? Yeah, uh, that's a great question. So you know, customers already use S3 event notifications to drive serverless apps, right? So Correct. think about you add an image file to your S3 bucket, and then that fires up a Lambda function that dynamically resizes that image, right? Uh, what we hear from customers also is there, it would be great if I could fire two Lambda functions or maybe a Lambda function in addition to a Kinesis data stream. So often what customers did to make that happen with S3 event notification, which you can only use for one destination for one event type only is to build this really complicated single use mechanism. So customers would often ask us that, hey, EventBridge now lets you send events to multiple destinations, right? So can I use S3 event notifications natively within EventBridge? So this is our way to you know, exactly address that ask where you can use a single event to up to five targets simultaneously. I'm happy to you know, show it off in a demo if you like. Yeah, yeah. 
but also EventBridge comes with a lot of other capabilities as well. For example, an, an event message in its entire payload, EventBridge lets you filter on that. So you don't have to you know, get in all the millions or billions of events. You can just get the events that you need, maybe events with images of a specific size or maybe created on a specific date. So those are really advanced pattern matching capabilities that, that EventBridge offers. Additionally, EventBridge also gives you archive and replay options. I'm happy to chat about that in more detail, but that gives you a lot of cool new ways to backtrack. So think about maybe your application had some downtime and want to go back and fire up those past events, or maybe you want to hydrate past objects with your new application, with your new events. So you can do that with replay as well. Um, so yeah, so adding a ton of functionality to existing events uh, uh, is pretty cool. So making S3 like just that much better, just having like that additional functionality by using event bridge and the multi-destination like allows you to do way more things with any files that you might upload uh, yep. or I guess uh, I'm guessing there might be a download or read yeah. event too. So yeah. So, be... you know, what kind of events does it, does this actually trigger on any event regarding S3? Yeah, might be better if I share my screen. Do you want to? Do you want oh, to let's do that. Let's take so, a look at it. Yeah. yeah, enough with the words. Let's see. Let's see it. In you action. know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of this like you know we talk about the low code approach to things, and this definitely enables you to do a lot of low code. So, kind of, kind of, kind of focus on actually building things instead of typing a lot of stuff. Okay, so Shoik, I'm gonna bring up your screen right now. Awesome. Um, can you just make it a tad bit bigger? Yep. Just zoom in. Um, okay, that works. All right, so tell us what you're going to show us and show us. Yeah, so so let, let me just go to like my S3 bucket, right? So I have a ton of different buckets. Let me just pick one. So for example, in this bucket, I have a ton of different objects. If I go to my bucket properties, I have different configurations that I have set for that specific bucket, right? So one of that is event notification. So as you can see, I have a rule that 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 generates events when I restore my objects from archive storage classes, um, or when I tag new objects, or when I add new access control lists. So Kyle, to your answer on like what what are the different types of events that customers use? Uh, what we have added here is adding an um, Amazon Event Bridge within event notification. So you'd be able to enable Amazon Event Bridge for this entire bucket. So once you have done that, your events are now available for you to use in Amazon Event Bridge. So let's go over to the Event Bridge console to see it in action. So, so if, if you... I already have a bucket, I could just go in and check my options and, and it's gonna just pop up for me? Yep, so you can check your option to enable events on Event Bridge. That's how simple it is. So when you then go to event bridge, you can create a rule. So for example, let's say I want to create a new rule here and I want to get those S3 events, right? So I can uh, select predefined pattern uh, by specific service. Here I can use AWS. And as I mentioned, event bridge also has non-AWS third party events. So let's take S3 for now. So I'm going to select S3 uh, and then select S3 event notifications, which we launched today. So you mentioned what are the different event types. So S3 has a ton of different event types. So we have object created, which is the most common one. We have object removed. Uh, we have object access to or changed. Like for example, when your data ages and you don't need it as fast, you can move to more cost-efficient storage classes. You can get an event for that to make a record in your asset manager or your DynamoDB table and things like that. When you add different metadata to your objects when you remove metadata from your objects. So you can select a host of different events, right? Uh, let's say I, I, I want to add object tags and uh, object created events uh, for this specific application. And now uh, I can select different targets. So, so let's say I want to have the same event reach a Lambda function. So let's just you know add a Lambda function. But I also maybe want to create a data stream out of that. So this, this kind of capability was just not available with us before. So now we can add a new data stream. And let's say I'm not satisfied. And I also wanted to add it to an SQS queue, right? Because why not? 
So let me just add it to an SQS queue here. And then I'm done. So I can create that rule. And now every single time those object state changes happen, um, I can get an event. And, and uh, what I mentioned before, I can select a rule and also create archives and replay. Like I have this archive here. A replay would let me fire those events after they have happened. So I can create a new replay and mention exact time frame on when I want to refire those events in case I want to hydrate a new application or I want to just make sure that I uh, my downtime is not affecting my applications that are for events that happened yeah. in the past. So um, I'm going to pause. I'm, I'm staring at my screen. Yeah. I'm going to ask for a question. No, I just have a, a comment here. I love the fact that you know you can make complete workflows from this entire thing. Is mm -hmm. that you have your, I don't know, like a specific file being uploaded to a specific bucket, and then it can trigger a whole slew of things via the event breaker. Absolutely. So you can see like from resizing images to like storing metadata in a, data, in a database to alerting users, whatnot, right? So I think that the entire workflow here is, is, is just amazing. And yeah. And yeah, how do you see customers using this just besides my idea there? Yeah, I mean, image resizing is a really popular one, but Lambda is so much more than resizing images. Yeah. So think about think about an audio streaming service, right? Let's say let's say you have an audio file jump in, and you want to be able to do multiple things with that specific audio file. Let's say you want to transcribe that file with one Lambda function that goes yeah. to a transcribe service. Let's say, in addition, you want to generate machine learning services to generate a sentiment score um, using um, Amazon machine learning services like Comprehend. So you can do all of that with a single event yeah. without having to use multiple copies of the same object, right? And I think that's the direction that we are seeing customers take uh, to you know, get rid of single use mechanisms, uh, not have to create derivative copies or just building anything that is undifferentiated, you know, and just yeah. using event-driven architecture to do things with no server insight. Right. Now that's right. one thing like I actually didn't catch was the fact that you're doing all this with a single object as opposed to making duplicates. Mm -hmm. So then essentially you're saving you're saving uh, yeah. storage space inside yep. of your bucket as opposed to like constantly recreating this object thing. Yeah, also like the other cool thing about, you know, when we're talking about saving things, the other cool thing is also saving on, you know, different services, saving on compute for example. Let's say you yeah. don't want every single object to fire a Lambda, right? Let's say you want only specific ones that your applications need. So you can do that with pattern matching with EventBridge uh, with S3 events so that, you know, S3 buckets can get pretty heavy pretty quickly. So you can choose the events that you need and only pay for the events that match a specific rule. And that's one of the innovations that we have done on the pricing side of things. No, I, I have an, I have another question. Like, so I'm, a, I saw that you added those two or three different um, targets, but I'm assuming that I could still go back and add another one if, if like, uh, you know, a future use case comes up where I need to add a different destination, maybe. Yep, you can, you can edit rules on the fly. Like, you can have up to five targets. You can change different targets. Like, that's totally up to you and your application. Okay, awesome. And then, like, so. You know, let me be the devil's advocate here. You know, S3 events, that's fine. But like, I also CloudTrail does the same thing, right? Why, why S3 events and not like CloudTrail? Yeah, that's a really good question, Narco. So, uh, so EventBridge already supports CloudTrail events. And, you know, CloudTrail okay, yes. has uh, data events where you can see S3 objects uh, and, you know, S3 object creation, object deletion, and things like that. But another launch that we also launched today was new event notification. We are constantly adding new event types to S3 okay. that is you know, helpful that are not available on CloudTrail. So if you want to build applications for those, S3 event notification is a better fit. The other, but I think more important one is, you know, CloudTrail works really great for customers using you know, logging as an auditory mechanism, yeah. but for more sophisticated, more uh, event-driven apps, Customers ask us uh, for S3 event notifications because um, we, we, we have a once, uh, at least once delivery guarantee. Yeah. So it comes with a increased reliability and lower latency. So when you have downstream applications that need to react to 
S3 object changes as fast as you need them. Um, S3 even notifications will be a better fit for those serverless apps. Sure. Yeah, yeah. CloudTrail, there's usually a delay between an event actually happening and that event going on. And speaking of that delay, how 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 long is the de delay between um, the actual event, S3 event happening, and it notifying EventBridge? Yeah. What, so what are we talking you, here? Right. Right. So 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 you can expect the same latency that you see in S3 event notifications today. So when you create an S3 event notification that you know ends up invoking a lambda function. Okay. You would see similar latencies with EventBridge as well. Typically, um, typically events take minutes to appear. So, and you know, like they are uh, pretty. And the and the other thing for this one also is not events that are not lossy. So it'll have its own retry right. mechanism. So you always have an event that gets delivered at least once. Right. Well, it makes sense. Makes sense. Um, there's there's a question from next uh, next day in AWS. Well. Hello, Nick. Uh, pricing. I think it's very important for us to understand the pricing because this thing can actually go wild, right? So uh, big applications, serverless, scalable all over the world, right? You know, we have Kyle's vegetable dispensary, whatever. Uh, and I put a people... loop in my code and now I'm uploading vegetables all the time. Exactly. And we have <laughs> events firing left and right. So um, how much do we owe you for that? So how, how, would, the, how would the pricing work? Yeah, for sure. Um... So the, I would say in any event-driven application, there are two components to pricing. I think one is the delivery of that event to a downstream application, right? Okay. And two is the price associated with the invocation of that application. So one of the things that customers often tell us that, hey, I have millions or billions of objects, but I only want to have specific objects fire these events. for my, And this is especially true for data plane events where well, you know, like I just said before, like when we are talking trillions, so that's a lot. So right. what um, the the thing that we have worked on for this product is customers will only pay for events if they match a rule. So when if you remember my demo before, like I set up um, EventBridge as a destination within my bucket, that doesn't necessarily mean that I'm paying for every single object um, to go to EventBridge. I will only pay for objects uh, I, I will only pay for events if I create a rule that match a specific event, uh, uh, a specific event message with that object. So that pricing is uh, consistent with all other event bridge custom events pricing. So it's a dollar per million events. Uh, but right. when you, yeah, so when you, but when you filter them, uh, your total cost of ownership is actually a lot better of using event bridge as an integration for S3 events. Right. And, and so we're talking here about events dollar per a million S3 events or like dollar like if per, I, per event that you actually used. Use. Okay. That's correct. Yeah. Wow. So that's really good. So then, so then once again, it all, the pricing all goes back to pay for what you're using. Yes. As always, as always, right? So uh, that's the whole point, right? That's the whole point about the cloud and serverless and event-driven <laughs> stuff. Uh, pay for only what you use. So speaking of using Sovic, uh, how do our customers, the wonderful folks listening to us, how do they go about it and use this? W where should they go? What should they do? Is it available right now? Yeah, it is available right now. So it became available five minutes before we started talking here. So that's <laughs> that is pretty cool. Um, so for customers who want to try this out, um, the first step is to go to your S3 bucket, same way uh, where you would set up your S3 event notifications. We have made it as easy as checking a box, so it literally could right. not be easier. Um, once you have done that, go to EventBridge, just like you would set up your events, set up your rules, and test some events with some Kinesis, uh, Kinesis data streams.